Do you ever think about the past and get upset or worry about the future? Well, I do. And it's really not good for us. We need to stop that. Have you ever heard of mindfulness? You probably have, but what really is it? What does it mean? I know that it has confused me very often. So let's find out what it is and if it can help us on our journey of self-care. Hi, and welcome back. I'm glad you're here for this episode of Boss Up and Change Your Life. I've heard of mindfulness. Have you? Probably so. It's been around for quite a while and has been quite popular, but I'm not really sure why, and I don't know if it is something that would be helpful for me. Sometimes I guess I've even thought, that's just a waste of time, but I suppose that I'm actually just confused about what mindfulness even is. Do you know? Let's find out. I read an article on the Psychology for Everyday Life website. I'll put the link down below, that described mindfulness this way, that mindfulness is a state that can be cultivated in which one is aware of one's present experience and responds to this experience in a non-judgmental and non-reactive way. The author went on to say that our usual mode of being involves replaying scenes from our past and planning for our future. Mindfulness is a tool for training our mind to be fully present with our experiences as they are happening. So I find that interesting. We do often replay experiences from our past. I know I do. But can we really do anything about our past? Not really. Now, if you hurt someone's feelings or something in the past and you regret it now, then absolutely you can do something about that. You can't change that you hurt their feelings in the past. But you can try to make up for it by apologizing to them or doing something else for them now in the present. So that's what we're talking about. Don't think about the past until it just gets you all angry or sad. That's not helping your present situation. But what about thinking about the future? So far in this series, we decided to set goals for our future and to begin working toward those goals. We even looked at our personality type and saw that some people are really disciplined toward working toward their goals, whereas other people are not. But you know, some personality types are also more present, whereas others may dwell on their past more or dream more or worry about the future more. It's fine to think about the future and it's fine to work toward your goals. When it becomes a problem, is when you're worried or scared about what tomorrow will bring rather than simply trying to better yourself or working toward a future goal, you let it upset you today. So why exactly should we focus on the present? If we are not aware of our direct experience in the present moment, then we are missing out on our lives. The present moment is the only moment in which our life occurs and we neglect it at great cost. I find that when I am mindful, I feel everything more fully. I am happier and more connected in my relationships. I also experience sadness and the pain in life more fully, but it feels bearable somehow. It is the idea of the unknown future that worries us so much. If we stay present, we stop creating this imagined future and instead remain curious and open to what is happening now and whatever may come next. So as you can see, it's really easy to work toward your goals of tomorrow and stay in the present. Working toward your goals doesn't mean that you're always thinking or worried about the future. Being mindful is, yes, staying in the present, but also being non-judgmental and non-reactive to what your present experiences are. And that's a big distinction. I found another definition of mindfulness. Dan Harris, the author of the book 10% Happier, defines mindfulness this way. Mindfulness is the ability to know what's happening in your head at any given moment without getting carried away by it. And he goes on to say that practicing mindfulness is one of the single most powerful things that you can do for your well-being and self-care. Now, I really love his definition. He takes it away from focus on the present and not the future to being aware of what's going on in your head. And he takes out the words non-judgmental and non-reactive and says, without being carried away, 
Have you ever felt carried away? That means losing control. We've all had those moments when we've come unglued or lost control. We've probably had more than just a few. The point is, when it happens, it's sometimes difficult to control the flood of emotions that you feel. What we can control is our response to it. Calming down is an exercise in patience, self-compassion, self-control. It's a skill we can all hone by understanding what's going on in our brains when we feel overwhelmed. If you watched our episode a couple of weeks ago, we talked about calming down when you're under stress. We reviewed a few ways that we can do that. One was deep breathing exercises and another was visualization. Those are very closely related to mindfulness. It's easy to practice mindfulness while you're doing deep breathing or even visualization. Remember the visualization exercise that we discussed of the wave and our emotions flowing back out to sea with the wave as it ebbs and moves to the shore, but then away from it? Mindfulness is similar. Mindfulness allows us to see our thoughts and feelings like ships passing on the horizon. We can watch them sail by, but we don't need to hop on board and get carried away by them. By using techniques like visualization and deep breathing, we can notice our thoughts and feelings with compassion and curiosity, but then bring our attention back to our breath, which helps helps us to not over-identify with the thoughts or assign them too much meaning. Giving ourselves this time and space to calm down is a very productive type of action. It helps us reconnect and gain control, and it allows us to act with integrity and care about how we treat others and ourselves. Let's take a closer look at the benefits of mindfulness. Mindfulness has been found to be effective in treating depression and anxiety, and it may even decrease suicidal and self-harm behaviors. Also, because mindfulness leads to a decrease in self-judgment, it leads to an increase in self-esteem and overall satisfaction with life. I think those benefits are pretty good. How about you? So naturally, I'm going to ask you to start doing something with me over the next two weeks, and I bet you can guess what it is. So far, we've set our SMART goals and taken taken a look at our personality to see how we generally react and behave so that we can better understand ourselves and those reactions and behaviors. Then we looked at stress and how it can negatively impact our lives and our physical and mental well-being. And we learned that deep breathing and visualization techniques can help us combat stress. And so can mindfulness. So now we're going to add that step to our daily routine. So each morning when we wake up, we think about those goals and decide to be intentional, something that we can do on purpose to help us move toward those goals. Each evening, We've been reflecting on our day and what it was that we did intentionally. Last time, I asked you to do some deep breathing or visualization techniques at the same time that you do your reflection. Now, as part of that deep breathing and visualization, I want you to try to be mindful. Try to practice mindfulness. Now, it's probably going to be tough to do. What you're supposed to do is think about your present not the future or the past. Analyze those thoughts and feelings that you have, but don't react to them. Don't get carried away by them. Don't start worrying about them. Don't start thinking about yesterday or tomorrow and just focusing on worrying about it. Bring your thoughts back to the present. And remember, tomorrow is another day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've liked this episode and I hope that you continue to join me in my self-care journey throughout 2023. Next time, we'll take a closer look at self-care. I've been talking about it a lot, but what does it really mean? And is it something that we really need to do? 